Welcome back, everybody. It is the morning of April 16th, 2018, 1039 a.m. That is Eastern Standard Time for me. You are looking at current temperatures of the U.S. right now. We can see our clear dip right here in the jet stream. That is the front or back edge of that storm that is pushing the rest of this nor'easter type storm we did experience overnight last night, especially the northeast and in the last couple days in the southeast states, coming all the way from Texas, originating in Colorado. A big, massive storm had a winter storm Xanto tied to it on the top part of the country. The central plains got snow. We can see we're waking up with 20 degree temperatures in North Dakota, South Dakota. As we move over in Minnesota and Wisconsin, still into the 20s, we really don't see high to mid 30s until you would get as south as uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama waking up in almost freezing temperatures today. Uh, the warmest on the chart today being 68 in southern Florida. Uh, we still have the rain going on in the northeast, guys, but this video, I'm going to make an update on that storm. Uh, this video is actually to show you uh, our first uh, hurricane wave of the season. Now, it doesn't look like this may form. Uh, the reason I'm showing this to you is because the waters now are completely ready for hurricane weather. This could easily turn into a tropical depression. I'm going to move across the dates here. This is Ventu Sky. You will be seeing a lot of this chart again, and you'll be seeing a lot of these spaghetti plots. We, can, we do have a plot that is moving down from uh, the North Atlantic. Uh, this is not the same system I'm about to show you, but the fact that we are seeing this now is very interesting. It's intriguing to me. If we remember last year, um, around this time, the 19th and 20th was our first tropical storm of the season last year. So we could be seeing one literally any day now, and I want to show you the first wave we got. So we are set at the 16th here. I want you to watch right here, right above the Cape Verde Islands. This is where our storms form, guys. You will see them come across east to west over South Africa. They will go off into the coast, they will dip down, and then they will follow our east to west water wave, we like to call it here, or our water path that leads right to the U.S. It's either go the storms either go up to the northeast, they come straight across into the Gulf, sometimes they hang out down here, uh, like Irma did. Irma came underneath the Bahamas, clipped Cuba, then went up the west coast of Florida, uh, which has been actually retired. I believe it was Irma, Maria, um, Nate was... Uh, uh, retired, I believe, and there was one more in there, Harvey, obviously. So those four were definitely retired names. Uh, we will never see them again. Uh, there will be new names all this year. We actually have our names already. Uh, maybe I can bring that up for us right now. Let's see what we got here. Desktop, Hurricane 2018. All right, maybe I don't have it set up yet, but I will. I promise you I will. But anyway, let's take a look at this wave, guys. Here is Tuesday the 17th. Click that. All right, here is Wednesday the 18th, and now you're going to start seeing the rotation here. It's coming right off this area, and it's going to start spinning right here. The high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic actually moves west to east and pushes it back in. Uh, it does have the chance of squeezing out down this way and then coming across that water belt we talk about, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. We are early in the season. Um, I'm fully in belief that hurricane season belongs to start in April, not May or June. Uh, we could see right here is the beginning of that counterclockwise rotation coming off the Madrid, the west coast of Madrid, and then it comes down through the Cape Verde Islands and it wants to go this way, but again, the high pressure is a clockwise moving force that is always in the Atlantic Ocean and that's why these storms go underneath it or they go up around it after they come up the east coast. This is our determining factor along with the jet stream dips uh, to determine whether or not they get pushed down or they're allowed to come up the east coast. As we get further into the season, I will talk about this more. I will explain it more to you that we're not here with us uh, last season. Uh, we had a very busy season last season, one of the busiest on record. I believe this one is going to match that. It's going to be very, very close to that season, possibly even close to 2004, which was one of our busier seasons. 2005 was bad. And then, of course, we had 2017 with the retirement of at least four major storms. Uh, we had a lot of activity, guys. It was storm after storm after storm. At one point, we had three and four tropical storms going on at the same time all in a line uh, along the warm water belt that we like to call it here that moves west to east or east to west rather into the U.S. with our jet stream moving west to east this way and we got a big churning circle here and with the high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic these storms come down and it depends on the pressure if how long they're pushed down and how and when they're allowed to release and come up or when they get pushed down into the Gulf or into Florida. <clears throat> but we could see it right here guys here is the 20th if I back up to the 19th you could see just the beginning of it we see that beginning coming right off this area it's actually the south end of Madrid not so much the west coast it comes off Casablanca 
and then moves down into the Cape Verde Islands. Now you can see here, as we move to the 20th and the 21st, it does get more prominent. We get that counterclockwise spin, but then we see the high pressure here. It kind of crushes it back into the country right there. And you can see by the 22nd, it wants to get pushed back in. I'm going to show you this on Tropical Tidbits as well. Uh, this probably will not survive. There is a chance it will survive. But the point of this, guys, is to show you that these storms are forming now. This is going to start happening, which means any single day now, we could see a tropical storm forming off this area. They also form in different spots, too. We could get formation down in this area in the warmer waters of the Caribbean, but it's not really that likely right now. Last year, we had a couple storms. Nate, I believe, formed down here and came right up through the gap. Um, not Jose. Uh, Katia, I remember a tropical storm. Katia, I believe, started down here. I may be wrong about that. But regardless, we have two major spots. We got this spot here. They come down off the Cape Verde Islands, right where this one's forming, and they swoop down, and then they follow this path until they are allowed to move up, or they're forced down into the Gulf, or low, even uh, midway into the Bahamas and Florida. That's how these work. That all determines on the jet stream and the high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic, which is always there. It's always present. This is the end of that storm we just had. Actually, there's another storm coming. I'm sorry about that. We're going to talk about that in the next video. But let's look at Tropical Tidbits right now and check, uh, check this out on Tropical Tidbits view. You can see the low pressure pops out right there, right underneath New Madrid. There it is right there. And then you can see the high pressure bubble that we just talked about. This is the high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic, the pressure bubble. It's always moving in a clockwise rotation, so the storms have to go underneath it. And then when they come up this way, it forces them around back over top. And that's why we had those issues. <coughs> Uh, with Ireland and uh, the United Kingdom with the storms getting pushed up this way and then launched right into that area. So we've got to keep an eye on them as well. Uh, they are just as much um, at risk as we are during this hurricane season. And they get, the, they get pretty nasty weather up here uh, when those storms come up. But we can clearly see the low pressure. We're about to 1,004 millibars. Uh, goes up back to 1,007 as it gets pushed back into uh, Madrid and the uh, s uh, west coast of Africa, South Africa. But you can see that low pressure lingering on. And then as we move forward into April 29th and 30th, we can see that low pressure comes back. So here is a second wave, guys. This is actually two different waves. We got one between, let's see what the dates are here, between the 19th and the 20th. 21 and 22, it gets pushed back in. 23 and 24 pass. And then we have the, okay, there it is, the 27th. Okay, so the 26th, 27th, and 28th, and 29th shows another low pressure. And here's yet another one. Now, if any of these slip down this way, they're going to get caught in the warm water belt and come this way. So we could see one of these guys at any time now. And that's what I'm trying to stress in this video. I might be being repetitive, but that is the point here. We need to be aware of this stuff. You're going to be seeing this chart, too. This is our mimic chart. We use this a lot to get that rolling uh, movement to see if we're going to get these storms that come off uh, the west coast of Africa. Uh, there are a lot of charts that show the Atlantic Ocean, but they cut off Africa. They don't show us the weather coming off this continent here. Now, that's what you need to watch out for, because you can literally see these storms forming before they even get to the Cape Verde Islands, and then they start moving into hurricanes. So we can kind of see these storms on Africa before uh, they turn into tropical storms. So I'm going to find a good chart that shows Africa and the weather there, and we can kind of get maybe another day or two notice before these storms even get into the Atlantic Ocean. We can see them as they form. We've got a lot of sand and dust that uh, get whipped up into the wind here, and they are actually part of these storms. They are, they are in part strengthening some of these storms with material. Um, that is another video I'll go into, but I just wanted to touch base with you guys and tell you we've had our first wave. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to form. It does not look like it's going to be a threat, but just to go it just goes to show that the month of April is very capable of producing storms. That is the first time I've seen a low pressure come off the west coast of Africa uh, since last um, November, basically, when we in last hurricane season. So that was the first one I've seen, and there's two of them in about a week and a half. So we need to keep an eye on this, guys. It is time to watch out for hurricane season 100%. And with that said, this is going to be in the next video here. Look at this rotation, guys. This is why this storm that we just had over the northeast was so strong. Low pressure was right here. All this moisture getting pulled up from the Gulf and from the Caribbean. And boom, just getting layered and layered and layered on top of the northeast. And we actually have some snow that may be moving into the northeast as well because of this. Whipping underneath here. Cold air is coming through here getting locked in this channel, and then it's moving west to east over the Great Lakes. We might have some snow in northeast Pennsylvania and parts of New York. All right, guys, I will be back with another update shortly. Hope everyone has a great Monday. Take care. See you later. Bye-bye.